Hello everybody, and welcome to a brand new LP, and as you can see, this one is Star Trek Elite Force 2. Do you wish to engage in training? Sure. Now, I've already tried recording this once, but uh, the quality was not very good at all. Welcome back to the holodeck training program, Lieutenant Monroe. Although I am quite confident in your abilities, Starfleet regulations specifically state that all personnel are to undergo fitness and combat readiness training at least once per Earth year. It is now time to begin your training. Are you ready to proceed? I'm ready. These exercises are designed to enhance your skills, Lieutenant. Take a few moments to move around the holodeck. By pressing your move forward, move backward, strafe left, and strafe right keys, you should be able to freely maneuver about. I'm going to try to not cut off the dialogue. Let us begin the exercises. This is kind of a this is just the training part, so it's obviously going to be pretty boring as a result. Um Okay, so here's a thing. Once I'm, Jumping plays a key role once he's done talking. Environment, Lieutenant. Successful maneuvering is the first and most important step to your survival. A jump is executed by pressing the jump key. If a jump is executed in conjunction with any of the movement keys, you will jump in that direction. For example, pressing the jump key and the move forward key will make you jump forward. Clear the obstacles ahead by jumping over them. Jump over all three obstacles and then we will continue the exercise. Excellent. Let's go on. Okay. Now, about the, uh, the secrets and the golden starships. I'm not going to be going for those because I have no idea where they are. And that would just require me looking at a damn guide. So I am not going to bother with that shit. I still don't know how to get that one. Crouching and walking will allow you to access areas that would otherwise be too small for you to maneuver in, such as a duct or a Jeffrey's tube. And. Mission success or failure may hinge on your ability to move effectively and, through um, tight spaces. A crouch is executed by pressing the crouch key. As with a jump, yeah, you can move there. while being crouched. To perform a crouch walk, press and hold the crouch key while you press and hold a movement key. Take note yeah, I can't do that it. while crouch walking will allow you to maneuver in tight spaces, it does reduce your speed. Clear the obstacles ahead by crouch walking under yeah, them. Yeah, I can't do it. Maneuver through all three, and we um, can continue the exercise. And don't bother telling me how to get that one, because I don't care enough to do it. Very good, Lieutenant. Let's continue. And I don't care enough to actually unlock anything. Use both your crouching and jumping skills to clear the following obstacles. Proceed to the ladder after you clear this portion of the course. Excellent work. To climb a ladder... Look up while pressing the forward movement key. Looking down while pressing the forward movement key will allow you to descend. Excellent. So, yeah. Notice that some obstacles are too high for a standard jump. To clear obstacles such as these, you will need to execute a crouch jump. This is done by pressing and holding the jump key, and then pressing the crouch key while in the air for more vertical momentum. Wait, what? This Hold will on. allow you to clear taller objects. Utilize both the standard and crouch jump to navigate these obstacles and advance to the next exercise. Okay. Excellent work. At the end of the corridor, you will see a maintenance door leading to a Jeffrey's tube. As you approach the maintenance door, Execute a crouch walk to enter the tube. Once inside, follow the tube down the ladder to the maintenance door below. We will continue with the second set of examinations when you complete this exercise. Excellent, Lieutenant. Your performance was satisfactory. If you are ready, we will begin the second examination. On your missions, you will encounter occasions where jumping will require both distance and precision. In a situation like this, a miscalculated step will often end in injury or death. For this exercise, yeah, very good, Lieutenant. Let's continue. I should, I should have let him 
finish his dialogue. So I know people it is unfortunate, do like dialogue sometimes. Jump or run off this ledge to the floor below. Oh. Notice the change in your health status. While your hazard suit is designed to help of excellent work, Lieutenant. Oops. Your progress is acceptable. Damn it. Okay, don't touch anything. Many of the doors in your environment will open automatically as you approach. However, some doors, such as the one with the damaged operations panel, are malfunctioning and will not open. Some doors can open, but are locked. A door's locked status can be ascertained by looking for a red or green indicator light, most often found above the door itself. You will notice the light on the functioning door is red, meaning it is currently locked and will not open. If you look around, you should be able to find a switch nearby. Walk to the switch and press your use key. Ah, here it is. Well done. Notice the indicator. Uh -huh. To operate a lift, move to its operations panel and press your use key to activate it. There are many objects you can interact with. The operations panel is indicated by an identification overlay inside your head. Use this lift to proceed to our next exercise. Excellent. Okay. I know there's a fair bit more after this. Interacting with your world is vital to your success and survival. You have already seen where interaction can operate a door, activate a lift, or draw energy from a terminal. Here you will see that your interaction can change the very environment itself. Move to the nearby operations panel and activate it by pressing your use key. Okay. I'm still trying to get the Excellent. hang of crouch jump if Notice I'm doing it right. The panel activated the bridge. Interacting with the environment will often allow you to continue <clears throat> when there seems to be no other way to progress. Now, Lieutenant, cross the bridge as we are ready to begin the next exercise. Like your hazard suit, your tricorder also has an interface to your tactical eye display. Approach one of the crystal deposits. Use your tricorder key to activate your tricorder. Notice that once your tricorder is active, an identification overlay appears around the deposit in your TED. Now aim your tricorder at the crystal deposit and press and hold the f excellent work, Lieutenant. When active, your tricorder also feeds tactical data to your TED. Data from the tricorder's angular proximity discriminator okay. is represented in the upper right corner of your display. Now, note the green resonance beacon. That beacon represents my location in your environment. Watch the beacon as I move about the environment. Notice how it moves to track my relative location. The angular proximity discriminator provides a unique resonance beacon for most object types. For example, non-hostile life forms are marked with a green beacon while hostile or aggressive ones are red. Additionally, the discriminator will denote your mission objectives with a gold circle to signify their importance. Please proceed through the archway to the next exercise. Your tactical eye display is capable of artificially boosting the gain levels in all photonic registers. This allows you some degree of night vision. For this exercise, use your night vision key to activate the night vision mode. Then navigate through this cave to the exit on the other side. That That is actually a pretty important thing to, uh, to know about, obviously, because there will be a lot of darkened locations throughout the game. Well, maybe not a lot. Now, Lieutenant, we will recertify you on advanced tricorder mechanics. Activate your tricorder and move to the nearby console marked with an identification overlay in your TED. Modulate the console by first aiming your tricorder at it, then pressing and holding the fire button. Your tricorder will feed progress data to your TED, providing you with constant feedback on your progress. Continue modulating the console until the process is complete. I was only doing that so he would finish ta talking. Satisfactory work, Lieutenant. On simple consoles like this one, your tricorder will be able to modulate the necessary carrier wave itself. However, more sophisticated systems will require user assistance to complete the task. Let's move on. 
activate your phaser by pressing the weapon group key. Your tricorder will lower and your phaser should be readied. Notice the red force field impeding your progress. To disable the force field, you must shoot the plasma conduit that powers it. When you are ready, press the fire key to destroy the conduit. As you fire, notice how the energy register on your lower right rapidly decreases. This energy bar measures the energy power of your currently active weapon, in this case, the phaser. <laughs> Excellent work, Lieutenant. Here's another very important lesson in the game. Through its interface with your TED, your tricorder provides you with additional view modes. Activate your tricorder and press the alternate fire button. Notice how your view changes. Your tricorder is now feeding information on the structural integrity of nearby objects directly to your TED. In this view mode, you can see stress fractures and structural weaknesses that would normally go unnoticed. Note that optics with structural flaws are often suspended. Use your phaser on the objects identified in the structural area. There we go. Satisfactory performance, Lieutenant. Let's move on to the weapons examination. Now, Lieutenant, your records indicate that you need to recertify on both the standard Federation phaser and the compression rifle. We'll begin with the phaser. For this exercise, use your phaser to destroy as many practice targets as you can. You may use either primary or alternate fire, but you must continue the exercise until you destroy enough targets to qualify for recertification. Good luck. There you go. Excellent. We will now repeat the exercise for the compression rifle. As with your phaser, you may use either primary or secondary fire. Yeah, right. However, you must continue until you destroy enough targets to qualify for recertification. For this particular exercise, the uh, alt fire is not that good. Although, yeah, because it doesn't work the same way as uh, exemplary work, Lieutenant. You have now successfully as in, uh, completed the training Elite exercise. Force One. You are fit for active duty as a member of the Hazard Team. Thank you. Now, because Obviously, that was like a torpedo. In the first game, it was just like a super shot. So, anyway, now for the actual first mission. On Stardate 483.15.6, the USS Voyager vanished from known space. It was transported 70,000 light years across the galaxy and cut off from Starfleet. To protect the ship from the unexplored Delta Quadrant, Chief of Security Tuvok created an elite strike force, the Hazard Team. After seven years, Captain Janeway found a shortcut home, the Borg Transwarp Hub. Armed with technology from the future, Voyager attacked the Borg Armada and hurtled into an unstable transwarp conduit, heading for the Alpha Quadrant. But the Borg Queen had other plans. A Borg sphere captured Voyager and imprisoned the ship in a dampening field. Lieutenant Alex Monroe and the Hazard Team would have to sabotage the Borg sphere. The Hazard Team would free Voyager's crew or watch them be assimilated. Now, in this game, I do not have the choice to be male or female, which is why I chose to be male in the, the first will not attack game. You until you prove to be a threat. That should give you time to reach Subjunction 37, where you'll find the three dampening field generators. Got it. Let's go. Today, there's too much anti-lepton interference. It just boosts the signal. That's dangerous. Commander Tuvok, Hazard Team requests permission to get going. Beam them out.
Telsia. Chell. When road to Tuvok, where's the rest of my team? Chell here. What a rough ride. I think I have transporter shock. Status. The interference must have separated us. We're lucky it didn't... Status, Chell. Uh, unharmed, but... Queasy. Uh, my, my tricorder located you. I'll meet you in... Chell, report! Just my luck, force fields. I'm trapped! We'll find you. Monroe out. Stay close, Jane. Okay, Tell so... Here. I'm scouting out the generators. Good. Keep me posted. Okay, so... Obviously, you know what to do. You know what we need to do right now. And hence, yellow force fields can be activated by... Yeah, you can see that. I'm not reading it out. And what was the other one? Okay. Oh, shit. Oh, wait, I, I can actually use this for right now. Well, I'm not going to fight the Borg until I have to, which in that case, I most certainly did. I do like how Chang can take care of most of them by himself. Okay, so now I can go down this. since I killed everything. And do these Borg perceive me as a threat? No. You'd figure the entire crew would be, but I'm not complaining, because that would be a little hard. I can't modulate this yellow force field from here. Use your tricorder on that control panel. And is this a simple one or a hard one? Probably a simple one. The force field's down. Thanks. And <laughs> um, okay, I gotta get to the end of this quickly before they die. Not that they will, but the green force field just went down. Excellent work. Um, okay. Look out. And Let's find Telsia. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. And I'm missing a starship. Do not care one bit. There's Voyager. I wish I was back there, recalibrating antimatter containment fields. We are the world. Resistance is futile. You will be assimilated. They're active. Use IMOs. The board can't adapt to them. Resistance is futile. So yeah, I can't use the iMods for actually quite a while. And there you go. When road to Voyager, the Borg took Chang. Beam him out. His signal is too weak. Find him and eliminate nearby sources of interference, possibly force fields. Understood. Gel, locate Chang. I've sent his location to your tricorder. He's in a maturation chamber for assimilation. Oh no. Chelsea to Monroe. I found a Borg relay node. Accessing their computer system. Good. The Borg took Chang. We'll find you after he's safe. Oh, hit the wrong button. All right. And 
Chang is below us, but the only lift control panel is up here. Stay here and operate the lift. I'll get Chang. Now, I know jumping here will cause some fall damage, so not that I have any reason to do that. I didn't mean to hit that button. That's the button you use to type in cheats. And unlike Foster in the first game, you do have to save Chang, I'm pretty sure. Oh shit, that's not enough. Oh. And I'm just running away. I like how that actually worked. Alright, so once I get to the next area, I'm gonna cut the segment. So right now we're at 22 minutes. And that knocked out the force field up here. And I gotta get up there quickly. Okay, Chell. Yes, sir. Hey, you get me the hell out of here. Ensign Chang is safe. Locate Ensign Murphy and complete your primary objective. And nice job, Nero. Let's go find Telsia. Oh, once I exit the air, this area and go on to the next one. And I'm not actually sure which direction to go offhand. Yeah, I keep... I keep obsessively checking for, uh... Secrets, even though I don't... Okay, this is the wrong way. Even though I'm not collecting them. I don't know why I did that. Ah, okay, yeah, this one. Okay. So unless there's a cutscene, okay. So, I think this is a good long enough first video for the playthrough, and I will see you guys next time.